From being the first rapper to make millions of dollars through selling ringtones and utilizing internet for music distribution. On the first rapper on Twitch. On the first rapper to get signed straight off the internet from high school to a record deal to Jimmy Iovine and Interscope Records for over a million dollars. Man, stop playing with me, what? To now being seen as nothing more than an internet meme. Soulja Boy has gained a reputation as being a compulsive liar and starting beef with the entire industry for nothing more than a quick drop of clout. How did he put himself in this position? Was it because of his extensive drug use that he simply felt underappreciated for his innovations? Or has Soulja Boy's career declined so drastically that he's desperate for publicity to help with his negative net worth and the debts he's accumulated? It's your boy Luesta, and today I wanted to tell you guys how Soulja Boy ruined his career. Throughout this video, you'll notice a key pattern. When Soulja Boy's career seems to be going downhill and his name is dropping in relevancy, he'll make up some type of lie, act outlandish, and then beef with another artist all just to keep his name in the headlines. Seriously, Soulja Boy is known for beefing with damn near everybody. He even started the Soulja Boy trend after he would spaz out talking about the time he apparently shot a group of men walking into his home. I hop out, I start shooting. Bow, 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 bow. Shot the nigga. Bow, shot his ass. Bow, bow. They run out the dough. Thanks to Soulja Boy's beef with Lil Yachty, Soulja Boy would post himself with India Love, who was thought to be dating Bo at the time. Following this, Soulja would post screenshots of Bo asking him to delete the photos. His response to this not only would make Soulja Boy post even more about it, but Bo would then recreate the Soulja Boy challenge, pushing their beef even further. What gun did you use? Nigga, I had a motherfucking Draco, nigga. Nigga, I have a hunting shooter, nigga. Well, how shooters in Atlanta, nigga? Yeah. Just when you thought Soulja Boy couldn't get any more insane with who he was firing shots at, he would infamously go on to start beef with the Migos. Fuck Quavo, fuck Migos, pull on your block with the Draco. Fuck Quavo, fuck Migos, pull on your block with the Draco. Ice T. You gotta be ashamed of yourself, bro. Real talk, you gotta be ashamed of yourself. All as you is. NBA young boy. Bring your ass out of the house, nigga. You can't come outside, nigga. Oh, God, you on house arrest, nigga and tons of other beefs we'll discuss later in this video. One of the most viral moments of his career would come from a beef that he started with none other than the Six God Drake. On his interview at The Breakfast Club that aired in January of 2019, one of the funniest Soulja Boy moments was born when he hilariously claimed credit for Drake's entire career. Drake? <laughs> Drake? The nigga that got body by Pusha T? The nigga that hiding his kid from the world, but his world wanna hide from the kid? Arby Graham in a wheelchair? Drake? Y'all niggas better stop playing with me. <laughs> Y'all talking about the license? Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me like I ain't teach Drake everything he know. Y'all ain't hear Drake on with his first song. Tell me what's really going on. Drizzy Drake back in this thing already. What's that? That's oh, Soldier. That's oh, my bar. Shit. He copied my oh, whole fucking bro. Word for word, shit. bar for bar. But remember, this isn't the Soldier Boy we once knew. There was a time when his music stood out on its own without any need of extra attention or controversy. However, he's had his fair share of legal troubles using each arrest as a stepping stone to boost his fame since 2011, where he was arrested after being caught with three firearms, five ounces of marijuana, and $46,000 of cash. Instead of dwelling on the situation, he would clap back and use this to transform his brand, essentially transitioning from the rapper who made songs for teenagers to enjoy to a real-life gang member actually in the hood. But this transition in branding wasn't all too successful, which was made evident after the amount of times he would be called out for being a fake gangster, such as this one viral clip where he was literally called out while filming an Instagram live. Told you ain't gonna catch no fame because I'm worth too many M's, you dig? Hey, what's going on, man? They say Soulja ain't from the hood. Hey, they say Soulja ain't from the hood. What's that you talking about? Oh, man, that's like, what's happening? What's happening? This would lead Soulja Boy to getting clowned all over social media with comments such as Soulja Boy is fucking stupid. I mean seriously, how dumb can you be? Going to the hood and pretending to be one of them? LMAO. So already we've established Soulja Boy's game plan to remain relevant, but if it wasn't already apparent, Soulja Boy is known for being a complete liar. One of the first times he was caught red handed was on Soulja Boy's 21st birthday, where he claimed he purchased a $55 million jet as a birthday 
birthday present to himself. The jet cost $35 million, but Soldier Boy then spent an additional $20 million on extra features for his Skyride, including flat screen televisions, Brazilian hardwood cabinets, and Italian leather seats. Soldier Boy is also renovating the bathroom and giving the jet a paint job, adding his own logo. However, this claim was straight up disputed by his very own management, with Soldier Boy's spokesperson Greg Miller issuing a statement on behalf of the rapper, saying, the elaborate rumors are not true. Although this would only keep Soulja Boy's name in the public mouth, with some users taking it to social media, writing, say it ain't so, I'm shocked. A rapper lying about their wealth and status? No way. Soulja Boy is an underrated liar, not gonna lie. It's clear that Soulja Boy's rap career is something that has been dead for a very long time, with the majority of his tweets struggling to break even 100 likes, averaging only 600 viewers on a Twitch stream, and having just one song break over 100,000 plays in the year 2023. It's astonishing, particularly when we consider the start of his career, when Soulja Boy had the attention of hundreds of millions with his music, and when he was also celebrated as a pioneering figure in rap for his early recognition of the internet's potential to boost his fame. That's because in 2005, the way to sell your music was incredibly different to now. Typically, you'd go around and try to sell your CDs in public. Yet, at the same time Soulja was finding his passion for music, he was also becoming more interested in the internet, which was only becoming more popular at the time. He was thinking of a way to leverage it to boost his music's performance simply from his bedroom. This is where he would come across a site called SoundClick, which was just an early version of SoundCloud, and was one of the first sites that gave artists a way to distribute their music without the need of a record label. One of Soulja's first songs ever released on SoundClick actually went number one on the entire site, a comedic tune by the name of Doodoo Head. Using this success, he branched out to MySpace, the internet's earliest version of social media, where he almost instantly blew up to over 1 million connections, which were basically followers. And three months after YouTube was released in February of 2005, Soulja was the first rapper to actually post consistently to YouTube and take it seriously. Matter of fact, his first video ever is still available on his channel today. Hey, what's up, man? As you can tell, Soulja Boy was incredibly smart at a super young age, and he literally predicted the sudden rise of the internet through apps like MySpace, YouTube, and SoundClick at a time when it was massively underestimated. I mean, he even predicted the rise of streaming games. Way back in 2008, when YouTube was just a few years old, Soulja Boy was posting videos on Halo 3. Hey, Rev, Q, Jabbar, what's up? What's up? Um... I'm ready. One of my bitches just called me who I used to fuck back in Halo 2. Oh yeah. Oh, bar, she, bar, bar, she told bar, me bar, that this bar, bitch bar. down here is at the... <laughs> She said this bitch down here at the beach, man. All right, I'm ready. In 2007, Soulja would release his biggest song of all time, almost predicting the perfect formula for music that is still recreated to this day for TikTok songs, which is a catchy beat, simple lyrics, and a dance to go along with it. You probably heard of the song Crank That. You know, it's like that right there. This way. Well, at one point, this song literally ruled the world. It was all over radio, MTV, and everywhere. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was cranking that Soulja Boy. The song would skyrocket to number one on the Billboard 100, and it would go on to become one of the most sold ringtones ever back when they were really popular. He essentially revolutionized the way people saw music online after he realized you could monetize everything. When did you make the decision to actually market it like you did, where you did the LimeWire thing and changed the song titles? I wasn't on the radio, I wasn't on TV. I didn't know how to get on TV. So all we had was the internet. When it come to LimeWire, they had a section on it that showed you the most downloaded things on the platform. I just took the crank that song and just renamed it Britney Spears and put it on LimeWire. Now, monetizing everything would be a mindset that carried on with Soulja Boy over the years. And as you will see later in this video, it didn't always benefit him. But he would go on to follow up Crank That's success with even more bangers, such as Turn On My Swag, Kiss Me Through The Phone, and Pretty Boy Swag. All of which are still some of the most viewed videos on his YouTube channel today, despite the fact he's still uploading music for nearly 15 years on it. Which is another problem I want to discuss later in the video as well. At just 18 years old, Soulja Boy was generating over $7 million in just one year. Now, this is back in the year 2008, so if we adjust for inflation, it's 
it's now over 10 million. Although take this revenue that he's generated with a grain of salt, as Soulja Boy was about to completely tarnish his reputation in the years to come. As when his relevancy started dying out, Soulja Boy saw no limits in how to get his name back into the headlines. Now in 2014, Soulja Boy would show the transformation of his image. He was no longer this teenage rapper who ruled the world with his dances, and now he was at the lowest point in his career. Instead of continuing to simply drop hits and bangers for his fans to enjoy, he suspiciously became more infatuated with becoming a professional actor, as he would start to portray the image of a gangster, which was very uncharacteristic for him to do. 2014 was the same year Soulja Boy would be arrested for the first time after he had a loaded handgun in his car while cruising around the streets of LA. He received probation in the case, which was reportedly extended in December of 2016 after he was arrested yet again and found to be in possession of another firearm. I'm 26 now! That's it over with! Boy, I'm shooting niggas! Boy, I'm face shot and shit! Head shot and shit! I'm knocking niggas the fuck out! All that! Nigga, that shit over with, nigga! He pleaded no contest in April of 2017 to two counts of felony weapon possession charges and one misdemeanor count of receiving stolen property. A year later, however, he would receive five years of probation and 240 days of community service for the crimes he committed over the previous years. Yet in 2019, the police searched his house to look into accusations that he had kidnapped and attacked a former girlfriend. During the search, they reportedly discovered ammunition, which was a breach of his probation terms, where he'd eventually serve a 240-day jail sentence. You are to serve 240 days in the county jail with credit and 20 actual plus 20 good time work time, so a total of 40 days of credit. You are still obligated to perform the 265 days of community service. So what drove Soldier Boy to adopt a street persona? He was already wealthy, surrounded by good company, and still relevant, far from being just a one-hit wonder. Moreover, he didn't have the same tough street experiences that influenced artists like Gucci Mane and Chief Keep. Well, this could be due to the evolution of hip hop, with some of the most popular rappers at the time being Gucci Mane, Chief Keef, as well as Lil Wayne, Jeezy, among others, who were absolutely just dominating the industry. And it seemed that with Soulja Boy's relevancy steadily declining, he decided that he needed to be more street to reattract attention in the music industry and bring his name back to the spotlight. It was here where Soulja Boy started beefing with literally everyone. Billboard once posted a list of his beefs that ranged from Famous Dex, 50 Cent, Ice-T, Bow Wow, Chief Keef, Kodak Black, The Migos, and even Kanye West. He's known for not holding back and his disputes often grab headlines. Surprisingly, he's also classed with J. Cole recently, who's often seen as one of the more positive figures in rap. These are just some examples of the many artists he had altercations with, but possibly the most significant beef Soja was involved in was when he would call out Tyga for having the most successful comeback of the year. Tyga would return to the mainstream after he released his song Taste, leading him to be regarded as the biggest comeback of 2018. Tyga took everything in stride, he just stayed focused, and this year, in 2018, he's made the greatest comeback of all time. Who can you name that took that many L? and bounce back just like it was 2011 again. Soulja Boy's answer to this? Well, he believed it was him who had the best comeback since he was madly irrelevant and starting to create noise by pretty much acting like an idiot. He would start the feud by tweeting out some disrespectful comments about Tyga's baby mama, Black China, before then going onto Instagram Live to scream about what the public was saying. I'm on fire, nigga. Nigga, I had the biggest comeback of 2018, nigga. Niggas up here talking about Tyga. Tyga, Tyga, huh? Tyga had the biggest, man, get the fuck out of here. I had the biggest comeback, nigga. After that Chris Brown shit, after that Migo shit. Y'all tried to count me out, nigga. Tyga responded by sharing some Spotify stats to prove Soulja Boy wrong, but Soulja Boy didn't stop, and he dragged this out for years. This clearly shows that Soulja Boy's pride was hurt when he didn't receive the recognition he felt like he deserved. This eventually led to a meltdown online, where he faced even more embarrassment as other rappers continued to mock him, such as Trippy Red. Tiger, Tiger, man, you got me fucked up, nigga. You know I had the biggest comeback of 2018. After Soulja Boy would appear on his infamous Breakfast Club episode that we discussed earlier which now sits at over 19 million views, being the second most viewed video on their entire channel, he would fire more shots at Tyga and other rappers, confirming the entire industry was now against him. The nigga that lost his bitch to Travis Scott? Oh shit. The nigga that Travis Scott netted in the bitch and got her pregnant? Damn. He had the biggest comeback? Cause of what? After firing shots at Tyga, he would then go for none other than Kanye West, 
text multiple times, claiming that he was not the Walt Disney or Steve Jobs of rap, but that Soulja is. Nigga talking about Kanye. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I'm that nigga. I'm the nigga. Kanye came in here talking about I'm Walt Disney and I'm. What did he say to you, Charlotte? I'm Walt I'm, Disney. I'm Steve Jobs. Nigga, you ain't none of that. You ain't none of that, bro. You kissed them folks' ass at Louis Vuitton and you kissed them folks' ass at Adidas and you came out with two pair of goofy ass tennis shoes. Initially, this didn't cause that much backlash. And the interview had incredibly positive reviews from the audience. This interview changed my whole perspective on Soulja Boy because I'd done some research and this man is right with 98% of the things he said. Soulja said, they all laughed at me and now they all doing exactly what I did. Straight facts. However, eventually he would take it too far and turn the entire industry against him. Essentially making it so that no one wanted to work with him. And the same fans who adored him to view him as nothing more than a sad joke. One of the cases that can be made for this transition happening was when he tweeted out he just signed a $400 million endorsement deal for the World Poker Fund. $400 million deal confirmed. I think they lowballed me though. I was thinking two or a billion. Now, many people were skeptical about this and literally no one believed it was true. And almost straight after this announcement, CNN would do some digging to find out that the World Poker Fund Holdings has a market capitalization of around 50 $2 million, making it impossible to pay him out that much. World Poker Fund Holdings' own annual report lists losses over $400,000 in the previous year. So where was the $400 million coming from? Well, it turned out to be a complete lie. With his manager claiming he really kind of jumped the gun by using the $400 million figure, even though his manager publicly stated this, Soulja Boy would still attempt to claim that he was being paid $400 million. Now, you announced you had a $400 million deal with the World uh, Poker Flight facts, Gaming. Nigga, it. The company said it turned out that it was just shares that were valued at $2.5 million. Same well, millions is millions, baby. This, combined with a long list of other lies he was making, proved that he just wasn't really trustworthy, meaning no one wanted to buy his products or get too involved with Soja, as they didn't know what was real or what was fake. At the end of 2018, he continued to add salt to the wound after his attempt at releasing the Soja game, which immediately made headlines for being terrible. The game console was strikingly similar to the Nintendo Switch and was advertised as capable of playing Pokemon and Mario games, which is in fact against the law if you don't have consent. A couple of weeks later, he would announce more products, such as the Soulja Boy Mini and the Soulja Boy Fuse, and these completely flopped, with each console drawing comparisons to a counterfeit version of the original brands, which was precisely the case. So yes, this is as bad in most ways that I thought it would be. It is overpriced, it is not a good product, and you need to avoid this at all costs. Less than a month after release, every product was pulled from being sold online. After Nintendo threatened him with a huge loss, Lawsuit. He was also pushing the Soldier Watch, the Soldier Phone, and even the Soldier Headphones at the same time. And it's safe to assume that these products sold little to none. As the world was rapidly churning against Soja, it was quickly becoming apparent Soja was only in the game for a quick and easy cash, preferring quantity over quality. But the backlash he received did not make him hesitate to lie or start drama to promote his newest business endeavor. That was revealed to be one of the most evilest scams. Before delving into this, it's important to note there is this little thing called SafeMoon, which was a cryptocurrency heavily promoted by prominent social media influencers, including Jake Paul, Lil Yachty, NBA player Josh Hart, and of course, Soulja Boy. And they all posted roughly the same thing to promote this new crypto, with Soulja Boy posting, found an interesting product at SafeMars, looks moonworthy. Now, this project actually looked exciting at first, with the audiences of these celebrities investing their hard hard earned money into this new vision, but incredibly quickly things would take a drastic turn. Key employees would leave the company and the price of the coin would drop over 85%, leading two investors to fire class action lawsuits against SafeMoon and the celebrity promoters, one of these being Soulja Boy. And although he didn't have to directly pay any money from this lawsuit, he paid with his reputation. People like this have no soul, only in it for themselves. Everything this dude sells is a scam. Have people not learned from all of the other times he's done shady stuff, YouTube invested
investigator CoffeeZilla also exposed Soja and many others who promoted the scam on his channel with a video that now has over 400,000 views. Now, of course, who benefited from this? Not the investors, but instead, SafeMoon and the influencers who promoted it. I don't think they knew what they were promoting. I don't think they cared as long as they were getting paid. Now, the lawsuit anticipates this, saying, quote, they knew or should have known that the liquidity pools were designed in a way that allowed for the possibility of the liquidity pool being drained by defendants. Soja Boy's missteps have tarnished his reputation, brand, and identity, revealing a lack of honesty. His rush for quick profits turned him from a music marketing innovator into an imitation of a gangster, despite his wealth and a rest that suggested a hardened image. While he did recently release hits like Rick and Morty and She Make It Clap, which became popular on TikTok, there were nothing more than short-term fleeting trends. The simple freestyles that people made to these tracks garnered even more attention, such as Tory Lanez, leading to his fading relevance once more.